Hello everyone from Cross TV. I'm Pastor Dr. Richard Zevenbergen from Brazil. And today I want to teach the word of God to you about spiritual warfare. If you open your Bibles with me in the Gospel of St. Matthew chapter 11, verse 11 and 12. There are two Bible verses that only are recorded in the Gospel of John and not the other Gospels. So a very important Bible verses and verse 12, you can even interpret it in various ways. We will show you that later. But going to the Gospel of Matthew chapter 11, verse 11, we will read there where Jesus says the following. Very I say unto you, among them that are born of women, there had not risen a greater than John the Baptist, notwithstanding he that is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. Here, Jesus is telling about the Old Testament and the New Testament. He's saying very clearly that in the Old Testament there are very big heroes, men and women of God, like David that slew Goliath, like Esther the queen that saved her people, Moses that liberated his people of Israel out of Egypt to the, desert, to, to the Red Sea and through the desert. So we have this great mighty men of God and women of God. But the greatest of all the Old Testament, Jesus says, is John the Baptist. And why is John the Baptist the biggest? We know very clearly that he prepared the way for Jesus. That's why he's the big. He was the last one of the Old Testament, great and mighty hero of God. But they, Jesus is telling something very interesting. You have the heroes of the Old Testament, and now we'll start the New Testament with Jesus. When Jesus will die upon the cross and his blood will be shed for the remission of our sins, the New Testament will start. And then Jesus is telling that the least, the smallest of the New Testament is bigger than all of the Old Testament. Because he's saying very clearly that the smallest of the New Testament will be bigger than John the Baptist. And now you can say to me, how is that possible? How can the smallest of the New Testament be bigger than John the Baptist? And who are those who are part of the New Testament? Everyone who believes in Jesus, that died upon the cross for his sin and was washed by the blood of Jesus belongs to the New Testament. So every Christian, every believer who believes in Jesus Christ, Jesus is telling here in this verse, will be greater than John the Baptist and all the other heroes of the Old Testament. But then you can say to me, how is this possible? Dr. Pastor Richard, how can that be? They have done so great and mighty things of God. And what have I done for the kingdom of God? I will tell you this. The Old Testament, people served God. But God could not have a personal relationship with them, intimacy in their hearts, inside of them. Because sin has separated men from God. We know very clearly that God created Adam and Eve. Adam and Eve sinned in the Garden of Eden, be it disobedient by it to God, by eating from the fruit of the tree of knowledge. And then they were separated by God because God said, you may do no sin. And because of this separation, men have done sin and God can have not have relationship with men because sin is putting a barrier between God and men. And so in the Old Testament, all the great heroes and women of God and men of God could not have a personal relationship with God, not could have really intimacy with God because sin separated. But when Jesus came on this earth, he was the perfect human being. He had done no sin at all. He really resisted all this temptation. He resisted all the sin. He committed no sin. And then Jesus went upon the cross and he himself, as the high priest, as the perfect lamb of God who had done no sin, he sacrificed himself at the, at the cross for us. He gave his life for us. And because he gave his life for us, he paid the price of all our sin because the, pri the salary of sin is dead. And Jesus paid that price because all of us deserve to die because we have done sin, because we were separated from God. But Jesus upon the cross paid the price. He gave his life. Not only paid he the price that we deserve to receive, he also shed his blood for us to be totally cleansed, for us to be holy, and for us to have a relationship with God. Because of his blood, we have received forgiveness, and we became cleansed, and we became holy. And there's no sin anymore in our life. So that are the two things which Jesus has done upon the cross. He took the punishment away, that is mercy, because he paid the price. He died for in our place. Not only he died in our place, he also 
cleanse us and made us holy so that we can receive by grace relationship with God. Jesus took sin away. And that's why when he was upon the cross and he said his last words that he said, it is accomplished, it is fulfilled. Right at that moment when Jesus died upon the cross, there was a big earthquake in Jerusalem. And this earthquake shaked the temple in its foundation. And the veil that separated God from man, the veil was torn. And when the veil was torn, God could have a relationship with human beings. He could be with us. And that's why that moment when the veil was torn and our sins were forgiven, God can live inside of us. God can have intimacy with us. God can have a personal relationship with us. God can live inside our hearts. And that's why we can have a personal relationship with God. And that's why the smallest of the New Testament, he who believes in Jesus Christ, receive mercy that his sins are forgiven, he will not go to hell, receive grace, that he's cleansed, that he has become holy, and by becoming holy, he can have a relationship with God, and God will live inside our hearts, not more in a temple made by hands of men, not a temple of stone, but now living in a living temple inside our hearts. We become now the living stones of the body of Jesus Christ, and God lives inside of us, and we have a relationship with God. That means... That every believer that believes in Jesus Christ, he's forgiven, he is saved, he is holy. But what most important is, God will live inside of you. You will have a personal relationship with God. You will have intimacy with God. God will be living inside of your heart. And now the power that created heaven and earth, when we read the book of Genesis in chapter 1, it makes very clearly that this world was dark, that this world was empty, and there was a big abyss. But the Spirit of God was hovering above the waters. The Spirit of God was hovering above the abyss in this darkness. And the Spirit of God, by the power of God, created the heavens and earth, created this whole beautiful creation. That's the power of God. God, out of nothing, can create things. God can make the biggest darkness become light. God can make the biggest chaos, the biggest atmosphere, become a creation beautiful. So I don't know what your life is. I don't know your situation. But the Spirit of God will come into your life and everything will be changed. The Spirit of God that created heavens and earth, the Spirit of God that resurrected Jesus from the dead, that same Spirit will live inside of you, will live in your heart. And now you have this power inside of you. That's why is the smallest, the least in the kingdom of God is bigger than all the heroes of the Old Testament. I want to say to you, my brother and sister, when you have Jesus, you have the power of the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit lives inside of you. So you are a great and mighty warrior. You have the power of God to do great things. And now we must read verse 12. When we go to verse 12 of Matthew chapter 11, verse 12 says this. And from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffered violence and the violent take it by force. This verse is only recorded in the gospel of Matthew. And this verse can be translated in the original language in several ways. The two most obvious ways that is translated and that looks totally opposite, but conforming the Greek language, it can have both meanings. I will explain to you. And if you have many Bible translations, you will see that every Bible translation will have this one of the two options that I will tell to you. The first option is this, that the kingdom of darkness, that the devil with hell and all his fallen angels are in this side. And on the other side is the kingdom of God, with God with all his angels. Now, one Bible translation can tell this, that Satan with all his angels is going to attack the kingdom of heaven, fight against the kingdom of heaven, and will say to everyone in the world, come and join me in this fight. You may join me to fight against the kingdom of heaven. And we see this happening every day. If we see the news, we see there's persecution against Christianity, Christians are thrown in prison, Christians are getting murdered, and we're seeing that a lot of people 
are joining the devil. They make an alliance with the devil. A lot of political leaders, nations, people, they rise up to be against God. So the devil is fighting against the kingdom of God and is mobilizing all the fallen angels, but also mobilizing every human being to join them in this fight. But in the same way, in the original language, it can be also translated like this. Here you have Satan with hell and all the fallen angels. Here you have God with all the angels. And God with his kingdom, with his angels, is attacking hell, is attacking the devil, is fighting against him. And also God makes the invitation to all the human beings to join him, to say, yes, you, you can join me. Believe in Jesus, get into this fight, in a good fight of faith, and we will plunder hell, we will solve, we will save souls, and we will preach the gospel to everyone. So there is this big fight, because both ways what I told to you are right, conforming the original language. So I think what God wants to tell to us is there's a big spiritual warfare against darkness, against light, against the fallen angels and the angels of God. But in the same time, we as human beings cannot be neutral. Because we must make a decision. There are only two masters and you cannot serve yourself or you serve Satan or you serve God. Whole humanity is in this fight. Or you fight against the light or you fight against the darkness. You fight with God or you fight against God. We must make a decision today. And God is asking to you right now. I'm asking to, to you right now. Make the right decision. Choose for Jesus. Choose to be a warrior of light. Fight against the darkness and spread, and, and spread the gospel. Proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ. And now, even if you are the smallest one in God's army, and here comes the great news, what we read in verse 11. Even if you are the smallest soldier, the smallest warrior in God's kingdom, you are a great and mighty warrior because you have the Holy Spirit inside of you. And you can do great things for God. Now, we have this foundation about spiritual warfare. There's a war going on. And the smallest soldier in the kingdom of heaven who is saved by believing Jesus, washed by the blood, is holy, have a relationship with God, have the Holy Spirit inside of him, is a powerful warrior. Now, if we go with Jesus to the big promise in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 16, we will read the following. In the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 16, verse 18 and 19. Just for you to know the context, Jesus is here with his disciple going to a city just outside of the Holy Land where the pagans live in the time of Jesus, the heathen, those people that don't believe in God, who are not part of the people of Israel. And when Jesus is there at this place, he goes there to a cave, but everyone said, this is the cave, this is the gate to hell. And there were also many temples dedicated to many false gods. At this location, Jesus says the following to his disciples. Uh, Gospel of Matthew, chapter 16, verse 18. And I say also unto thee, that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Jesus makes here this big promise to his apostles, that he's saying that he is the rock, and everyone who believes upon the rock, Jesus. Hell will not triumph against us because we are the church. We are the body of Jesus Christ. In the body of Jesus Christ, where every believer who believes in Jesus Christ is part of it, will prevail over hell. Hell will not triumph over us, but we will triumph over hell. That's why Jesus at this location is saying to the devil, a war declaration, I'm raising up my church because he is the beginning of the church. And Jesus says, my church will triumph over hell. So we... As warriors of Jesus Christ, we as the army of God in spiritual warfare, we may know that we will triumph over hell because God is with us. The enemy will not win over us, but we will plunder hell and we will empty it. And also give him big promise here. Verse 19, and I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And what Ever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loosened in heaven. So here's the big promise that God gives power and authority to the church. Later on, I will talk more about the keys of the heaven, the keys of the kingdom. But now focusing upon this, God gave us the promise that we will not be defeated, but we will triumph. 
Now you can ask me, how does spiritual warfare happen? How does the combat in spiritual warfare happen? Now when we see Jesus casting out a demon in Matthew chapter 12, and the Pharisees start to question Jesus about it, Jesus starts to explain how spiritual warfare happened, how combat happened in the spiritual world. And then, I will not read the verse right now with you, but I will explain how it goes in the physical world. If two people are going to fight against each other, let's say you have seen boxing match of taekwondo, of karate, or UFC, you know that it's a tatami or the box ring, and two people will fight against each other. One will stand, the other will fall, because there will be a winner and there will be a loser. So when two people are going to fight each other in combat, on the tatami, in the box ring, the person who's going to win is normally the person who has a heavier weight, who has more muscles, a longer reach with his arm or with his legs, a longer reach, who has most technique of all the fighting sports, who master them, and who is the strongest mentality and physically in best health. So the person who is the strongest, because the accumulation of all this will make you the strongest, the person who is the strongest will defeat the other opponent who is weaker. So he will be the winner, he will stand, and the other will fall, who will lose the combat. Now, if we will compare this in the spiritual world, and a human being will fight against a demon, then this will happen. A demon is a fallen angel, and an angel is bigger, heavier, stronger than us, well, better, well prepared, and a standard human being will not defeat <laughs> a standard human being will not defeat the demon. He will lose this combat, and that is really sad. And what happens at that moment? At that moment, the devil will ask the demon will ask the key of the lives of the person, and the person needs to give his keys in the hand of the devil. And when he gives his keys in the hand of the devil, he will decide what the person will eat, what the person will drive his car to, to which direction, what will be in the fridge, what music he will listen, what he will watch on the TV, which apps will be on his cell phone, the devil will decide. The demon will decide at the moment because he has defeated you, you must give the keys to him. So you must not be defeated by the devil. You must not fight against him if you are not a believer. If you do sin, if you will play with sin, and that's what happened. Most human beings will play with sin. And if you play with sin, the devil will defeat you. And you will become a slave of his life. And you need to give the keys of your life to him. And he will be the master in your life. But now I have good news to you. You may have fallen in sin. And you may have committed sin. And the devil may control your life. And he may have the keys of your life. But when Jesus comes, Jesus is bigger. Jesus is stronger. Jesus is more powerful. Then every demon, and when Jesus enters into the box ring with the demon, he will defeat him, he will beat him up, he will get the keys back. Only Jesus is different than a demon. He doesn't keep the keys in his hand. He keeps the keys back into your hand, and you receive the key. And when you receive the key, you need to become a wise man, and not a stupid man. What does a wise man do? You give the keys of your life back into the hands of Jesus. So that Jesus will decide where your car will go, what music you will listen on the radio, what apps will be on your cell phone, which, which TV programs you will watch, and what you will eat in the fridge. Let Jesus decide. Give the keys back to Jesus. The verse that I'm telling about to you is what Jesus said here. Chapter 12, verse 29, where Jesus says this, Or else how can one enter into a strong man's house and spoil his goods, except he first bind the strong man, and then he will spoil his house. So Jesus says in the spirit of warfare, about the life of a person, there must be two people fighting, two strong persons, but Jesus is the most powerful. He will defeat every fallen angel, and he will set every person free. And Jesus, what did he do? Jesus, on the day that he died upon the cross, we know that was on the Friday, on the Sunday he resurrected. What did Jesus do on the Saturday, the day that was silenced? We know very clearly, conforming the scriptures, that Jesus went into hell. And when Jesus went into hell, 
He went straight to the throne of Satan. Satan sent all his angels to fight against Jesus. Jesus destroyed every legion of fallen angel and came to the throne of Satan, grabbed Satan by the hair, thrown him on the ground, fulfilled the word that is written in Genesis 3, verse 15, crossed the skull of Satan, and when he crossed the skull of Satan, he said, Satan, give me the keys. And at that moment, Satan needed to give the keys of death and hell into the hand of Jesus. Jesus triumphed over Satan, and he received the keys of hell and death. You can read that with me in the book of Revelation, chapter 1, verse 18. In the book of Revelation, chapter 1, verse 18 is written there. And unto, uh, uh, yeah. I am he that liveth and was dead, and behold, I am alive and forevermore. Amen. And I have the keys of hell and death. Jesus has the keys of hell and death, my brother and sister. Jesus triumphed over all the demons. The, Jesus triumphed over hell. So now in the name of Jesus, we can set people free in spiritual warfare. We can set our nation free. We can set our city free. We can set our family free. We can set our lives free. And we can set people that are oppressed and possessed by the demon, we can set free by the name of Jesus. Because Jesus has triumphed. Jesus has defeated hell. Jesus has defeated death. He has the keys. He is the winner. And we are washed by his blood. We are cleansed. We are holy. And we have received the authority by Jesus that the gates of hell will not triumph over us. But we have the keys of the kingdom. Jesus has the keys of hell and death. And he has given the keys to us. So that now we as believers, we can use this power and authority in spiritual warfare that in the name of Jesus, the name that is given above all other names, that every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that in the name of Jesus, we will set those who are captive, those who are oppressed, we will set them free. So I want to teach you in the following classes. This is the first class. This is the first sermon about this topic about spiritual warfare in the ministry of liberation the ministry of deliverance the ministry of casting out demons we will do more series so watch with us for the next coming series that we will uh, teach more but now for you to understand god is the great winner he will set you free but i want to warn you every brother and sister if you ever played with sin if you had let sin come into your life because you thought, oh, it's just a little sin. I can play with this sin. I can do this sin. And how does sin come into your life that the devil will have power and authority over your life? Because many times we think sin is like a little puppy dog. We look at this little puppy dog and this puppy dog like that he has big, nice eyes. And we say, oh, so cool, so, so nice, so little, so beautiful. I can take him to my house. At that moment when you bring this little doggy, this little puppy into your house, what is sin? You will see that this little puppy, he will grow very fast in your heart. He will go very fast in your heart, inside your body. Because when the moment you let sin come in, the next day this little puppy has become already a big dog. Big powerful dog. And then the next day it becomes a big dragon, a monster, a wolf in your life. You have no control. So don't play with sin. At the moment you start playing with sin, the devil will have power over your life. And you will be defeated. That's why Jesus, you know, that's why God in the book of Genesis set against Cain that he said, don't kill your brother. He said to him very clearly, sin is knocking at your door. And in original language, the sin here is saying like a predator. A predator that is knocking at your door who wants to enter into your life. But you must not allow it. You must keep the door closed. Because if you open the door, the predator will come in and he will bring chaos. So don't let this little puppy dog come into your life. So you need to be set free. If you have let sin enter in your life, if you know that you are... Uh, addicted, that you are a slave, that you are bound to any sin, that you know that you are oppressed, that you know that the devil has power over your life right now. I want to say to you right now at this moment, accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Accept him and he will set you free. 
His blood will wash you and cleanse you. You will be delivered and you will be a new person. So you must make a decision. You must say, I want to be free. I know that I have played with sin. I am being defeated. The devil has the keys over my life. He decides what I watch on TV. He decides which apps I use on my cell phone. He decides where I drive my car to, what I listen on the radio, for kind of music. If you know that you are under the influence and under the power of the evil one, I want you to say God is going to set you free today. Today you are going to be set free. And if it is a family member, God is going to set your family member free. The chains that have made you a slave, the chains that have bound you to sin, God are going to break them right now. In the name of Jesus, we are going to pray and you are going to be delivered. You are going to be set free. You are going to receive liberation because Jesus is going to set you free. He's going to fight against those evil powers. He's going to fight against the sin. He's going to break the chains. He's going to deliver you. You are going to receive a new life in Jesus Christ. And he will wash you by his blood. And you will become a new creation. And you will become a son and daughter of God. And the Holy Spirit will live in you. And you will do great and mighty things for God. So I want to ask to you right now. If you want to pray with me at this moment. If you say yes I want to be delivered. Yes I want to be set free. Yes I don't want to be addicted to any kind of sin. Pray with me right now in this moment. Close your eyes and pray with me. In the mighty name of Jesus, we are praying right now that you break all the sin, Jesus. All the chains of sin. All the power of the enemy. All the power of the enemy be broken right now. Liberation in the name of Jesus. You are being set free right now. You are being delivered. And you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. And you receive the Holy Spirit. Rise up, mighty warrior of God. Rise up, men and women of God. You are holy. You are a child of God. And you are set free. This was Pastor Dr. Richard. Thank you for watching. And watch the next program to learn more about spiritual warfare.